Hey, what's up guys? What is going on? Welcome back. Hope y'all are doing well. Liverpool versus Bournemouth. My god, Darwin Nunez scored his first goal. That's what it feels like. I know it's not his first goal, but I'm celebrating like it's his first goal. And for a second, I thought I had to look again. He scored a brace. It wasn't a hat trick. I was under the impression that he scored a hat trick. That would have been amazing news. My whole week would have just uh, gotten a lot better just knowing that uh, Darwin Nunez scored a hat trick. But no, he scored a brace. They were good goals. Second goal, questionable, was a little unorthodox the way he hit it. Um, I know if it was any other player, I would have been like, yeah, okay, yeah, he. I know he meant to do that, but I would have been. It would have been safer to just do it the way they teach you academically, right? They teach you, you know, in the the youth system, right? <clears throat> but um, yeah, uh, two good goals. Uh, Liverpool played well, but here's my question: Why is it that these big teams it takes so long for them to to start playing well? F the first half. At the beginning, it was Bournemouth. Bournemouth had like two, three chances. The corners, Clivert, uh, Tavernier, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the other guy, sorry. Uh, but they, they had the opportunities to be able to be up 1-0, uh, maybe even 2-0 in the first half. And what would have happened, hypothetically, if that would have been the case? What would have happened? Like Liverpool coming back and, you know, scrambling. And like, you know, th this is a team that's in first place. I, I forgot. I just reminded myself right now that they're in first place. You can't play like that. And towards the end, again, Bournemouth towards the end, having opportunity to, to be able to score. And in the middle of the game, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes of, of the game, both of them were contesting for the ball. Nobody really created enough chances to look like they were going to score, but they were trying to. And it looked flu and it was fluid. You know, there weren't that many fouls. There weren't, the, the ref wasn't pausing the game. So it was like flowing. It was, I, I love the fact that it was flowing. But it takes Liverpool such a long time. That's such a luxury. That's such a handicap as well to give your opponent that much time, especially when you're playing away like Liverpool, you know, was playing away. I don't know what Manchester City is playing like. I've seen games, obviously, but I doubt they start off like this. I, and I haven't seen them when they played against Newcastle, when they played against Liverpool. They don't start off that way. And it's funny, everybody plays, kind of mirrors Manchester City at the beginning. You know, Manchester City end up winning. You know, you're giving them way too much opportunity, especially a team like Bournemouth. Look, I'm not trying to shit on Bournemouth, but this game should be unlocked. Just like Arsenal, the many times that they ended up tying and losing, that could have happened to Liverpool. Yeah, they won 4-0 in the end, only because they Bournemouth didn't. Uh, <clears throat> only because Bournemouth didn't score. Bournemouth had three opportunities in the second half. They could have catched up. This shouldn't have been a 4-0. This could have been a 4-2, a 4-3. Four, four, I don't know about 4-4. Four, four. I don't know about them winning, but yeah, had they scored first, who knows what, what this will, would have turned out to be in the end, you know, for Liverpool. So uh, and they they missed huge opportunities with Aaron. Uh, beating Van Dijk should have done better. Should have should have struck it. Um, Brooks, uh, you got to finish better. And more also, you got to finish better. Your aim was completely off. That was a huge opportunity, wasted opportunity for for Bournemouth. The second half, that's when things started to get a little bit better for Liverpool. The first goal, Nunez, um, beautiful combination uh, with uh, what uh, what's his name? Uh, Curtis Jones, chest, first touch, Jota touch, and. I'm not going to lie to you, but that looks so strange seeing uh, Nunez score that goal. Because I know that's very routine. He's done that since he can walk, I'm sure. And yet, for some reason, I expected that ball to hit the post. That's what I expected, to hit the post to barely almost make it. But no, it went in. It went in. Second goal, Jota <clears throat> Nunez didn't look like he was going to control the ball. It looked like he was going to ruin the whole play, the, the whole attack. And uh, luckily for him, in tandem, it was uh, I think it was Gakpo. Ends up passing it to, to Jota. You know what? And I think the goalie could have done a bit better from that angle. I'm not saying it completely as far, but mm, the goalie could have done better. And then the second goal to me, it was, I don't know. It was. It seemed like there were a lot of blunders. The pass from Gakpo, I think it was Gakpo to Nunez, that which was a little bit too, um, a little bit too hard. So it kind of ruined the surprise. And then Nunez with the center, not even being aware of you know who's following, who's uh, coming from the back. I was going nowhere. Luckily for him, Connor Bradley ended up getting the ball, and it wasn't a Bournemouth player. And then Connor to, drags it back to Jota, and Jota strikes. I, that was a good, I mean, I guess, uh, distraction, pump, fake kick. Uh, not really. It wasn't on purpose. And then he, he hit it the second time, and it went in. That was, to me, that was luck, <laughs> that, that whole thing. But, you know, luck luck to a certain point and then the effort obviously everybody you know uh, getting there everybody making an effort to show up right being being in the right place at the right time even if Nunez's is his cross was like off you know and and Gakpo I don't know it wasn't the worst pass either Jota with the strike you know the swing and he misses the swing and a miss and uh you know in the second one which helped them conveniently that that little swing and a miss helped them and then the fourth one from Nunez 
you know, dude, like such an unorthodox uh, way to finish the ball. So like I said, if this was somebody else, if this was Salah or anybody else, uh, what's his name, Harry Kane, I wouldn't have even questioned that. But Nunez, just use your left foot next time. Or maybe not. Maybe maybe just use that, that right, the outside of your right foot. It just felt like that could have also gone, uh, gone out or been blocked, you know, like an almost like always. He has so many chances that, you know, he wastes away and they're almost close, you know, and they're really good chances and they're really good strikes. But always just, you know, a, a bit too much, just a bit too wide, a bit too over the top. The Clivert um, crunch on on Diaz, um, come on. I, look, I love that he, he went old school. The <coughs> Sorry. The ref went old school by not giving. To me, old school is like you don't give a, a yellow for, for those kind of plays. At least from what I remember, the 2000, in the 2000s, you don't give a yellow for that. But as of lately, that's a yellow. That's even a red. So what happened? What happened? Like, I mean, in real time, it looked like nothing happened. And, you know, you see him, like, you know, <clears throat> waving his finger, like, no, I didn't touch him at all. But when you see that uh, slow-mo, man, he completely stuts. It wasn't even like the, the ball of the foot only got uh, on top of uh, Diaz's ankle. It was the whole cleat, the whole sole, the whole sole. You could have broke his ankle. And, yeah, Klopp had every... every um. Because I think he was contesting it. He was angry. He was fighting. I don't know if he, if he was fighting with the assistant uh, Bournemouth coach because of that. But uh, yeah, he was he was right to be to be arguing that, to, to complain about that. So overall, look, great match. Um, good victory for Liverpool. I'm glad to hear that they're still in first and they're keeping... I don't know who's going to be able to keep uh, the big baddie uh, Manchester, Manchester City away, but man... I can't wait. I can't wait to see them just slow down a little bit. Just one game. Let them lose just one game. But can these other teams, Arsenal, Liverpool, can they keep... Arsenal are out of the way. So whatever. Uh, Aston Villa, can they keep winning? Can they keep winning? That's the question. I hope they do. So anyways, guys, thank you so much as always. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.